standard than we always. Yeah. Not surprised. <laughs> All right, so it's ten forty-five. I'll call the finance meeting of July twenty of July eighteenth to order. July fourteenth. Today's fourteenth. Town board meetings on July eighteenth. <laughs> Today, more than I said, but we know what you meant. Me. <laughs> For the town board meeting on July eighteenth, we have an agenda to look at. Today is July fourteenth. <laughs> now that we've got that too. Now that we have that clarified. <laughs> All right, so we will. We I don't have any finance matters to bring up yet. We will in the next month or so as we get closer to uh, September. But as of right now, we're just going to hit key items on the agenda, looking for people's input and thoughts and ideas. So, who would like to start running us through? Doug, you want to start running us through key items? Yeah. Does anybody have any questions on the public hearings? I'm assuming we can skip those. It's not really finance related. Yeah. All right, well, let's jump into the resolutions. And then when we, before, uh, let's go through the agenda pieces and then we need to talk about a situation on the water bill. It's finance related. And that's yes. why the yep. Jim, Jim, Jim's always here, but anyway. Um, first two resolutions are just the standard, the monthly financial reports and the budget transfers. Kate, is there something, I don't know that there's anything specific on the budget transfers or there. Uh, I think it was just a really minor budget transfer. I think an increase for a donation that we received for a bench. So pretty standard when those come in, we increase the parks line for yeah. the work they do to put that bench together. Looks like it was a thousand dollars. The next resolution 189 is the adoption of the local law to override the tax levy limit for the budget. This is our standard public hearing that we would do and then overriding this and then if we're able to be tax gap compliant, then traditionally we would rescind this <clears throat> after we do the budget. But obviously the tax levy limit that rate increase also pertains to all of the special districts. So um, you know, I don't know, I, I just don't know. We've got obviously Canada Farmington Water District also factors into this. And so that, that was, could be right. challenge in this time. Can we clarify that at the town board meeting just so people are clarified? Well, we can clarify it during the public hearing. Yeah. And we can just explain that it's a it's a protection, really. Right. Because yeah. if we don't do it and then we have to go over it, then we're in trouble. Correct. Then it gets really tight. Oh no, I, I understand. I just think that yeah. something that and that's something that reads that. like what? Yeah. That really needs that. Yeah, we need to clarify that annually. Any questions on that? Uh, the next one, Kate, Jim, is your 284 agreement. Yeah, the uh, last year's budget, we uh, conservatively budgeted what we've received in the past two or three years from the state for state funding because at the time they did not have the budget passed. And in the past, they've only done it year by year. This time, they increased our revenue. I'm sorry, yeah, our revenue, I should say, for this line. And they've also put it in the budget for the next five years. We'll receive this funding from the state. So, which just makes it a lot easier for us budgeting each of the next five years. We know we should be getting 400,000 and change from the state for um, doing surface treatments and road repairs. I don't expect it to increase unless the state changes that. So what I'm asking for is to increase the revenue to the expense of $154,000 and change the 284 agreement. What does the 284 stand for? What it is, is it's a, a form that I put together that I present to the town board to expend the funds from the DA 5110-400 line that you're saying, yep, the money is there, Jim. Yep, you're going to fix this, Jim. And it's a state so, law section. Just yeah, the first so the section of state law. And specifically, what that is, Karen, is each year the highway, the elected highway superintendent, basically has to have an agreement with the town yeah. board relative to the roads that are being repaired. So, mm -hmm. and it's the way that the town board gets to essentially approve that and then has control of the fiscal side of things. So, the amended agreement, there's Three, we printed three mm -hmm. and Jared's signature folder for the town board to sign mm -hmm. Monday night, and then you'll sign it. 
yeah, from there, and then we'll send it over, give you one, give keep one, and send it over to Bill, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. How are we looking for expenses so far? I mean, are we? Uh, I think I've pretty much right through with the with the reserve with um uh, I might have fifty thousand left right now in yeah. July. So still climbing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. before the budget adjustment, he's got about three hundred and sixty-five thousand in that account left to spend, which is hardly enough. Yeah, in July it's not. So yeah. that'll the one hundred fifty plus the three sixty and bring up to about half, but that'll go. I think you already have a plan. Well, right? yeah, with the, uh, we still have to spend money on Michael's Road, yeah. mm -hmm. the, the culverts. I still have asphalt to place. So yeah. usually in July, I'm not. I say this broke, but just do the cost of everything. Yeah, I know. it's just do the same. So, okay. Right. Any other questions on that one? The next resolution, 191. This is the longest resolution I've ever written in my life. I know. <laughs> and it has no attachments, which is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to read like, that later. That was <laughs> So this would be the creation of a budget for Outhouse Park West. And so splitting it into five phases, obviously, you know, we created the capital project already. So this actually uh, identifies a budget for it. Um, phase one being the construction of the playground, phase two, the construction of the pavilion, phase three would be the entrance improvements, phase four, the sports field, phase five, the four season buildings. So, um, phase one, just to kind of walk through that, I broke that into two different sections. Phase one, A being the town's portion and then phase one, B. And it might be the easiest to scroll down just a little bit further, Kate, because I, I put a summary together. So it was all kind of together just to make it a little easier to look at. Keep going just a little bit. Uh, yeah, it starts right there and then goes into the next page. So it's the bottom, for those of you looking at the paper, it's the uh, bottom of page eight and the top of page nine. <clears throat> what I did here is on each of the phases, I broke down the portion that was the responsibility of dream, dig, inclusion, and motion, and then the portion that is the town of Canada. So for phase one, which is the construction of the playground, the 584,000 that is the town of Canada is the $298,000 in in-kind contributions and the $286,000 that we had already transferred back in February as a result of the expenses from 2021 to the parks fund. So there's no additional money being transferred. This is just paper moving just to account for all of it correctly in the capital project, essentially. Phase two, Talk about that. Phase two is the construction of the pavilion. The town of Canandaigua expenses of uh, 250000 are for improvements relative to uh, crosswalk improvements, painting, road markings, speed signage along Outhouse Road, a sidewalk to the building over at uh, Building 100 of Outhouse across the street, uh, coming over to the new pavilion. Uh, as well as some engineering work, as well as some um, electric to the site utilities, et cetera. On the revenue side, the, the match the expense of the 250,000, 45,000 is uh, in-kind contributions, our labor, et cetera. Um, 100,000 was a inner fund transfer uh, that we had already done. That's the one that we did at the last town board meeting when we actually did the, um, <clears throat> when we did created the capital park budget for that. And then 105000 to transfer out of the 22 budget associated with these improvements so that it's accounted for in the capital project. Phase three, construction of the entrance improvements, et cetera, 234000 in expenses. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, 34000 in expenses for the town of Canandaigua relates to uh, improvements relative to if we do it charging stations parking lot lights entrance lights security cameras landscaping final black topping etc 234,000 now that 234,000 is comprised of state aid if we were to get that um, 
for two different categories, as well as um, about $45,000 in um, for the um, phase three, and then about 22,000 would need to be budgeted for the appropriate budget when we get to that point to transfer that in. To make up phase four, the construction of the sports field, uh, $365,000. That expense would be all at this point, the town of Canadagua, however, um, we have had some very preliminary conversations with the group, Inclusion and Motion. They would be willing to help us raise money if we were to make that a turf field so that it could be inclusive for everybody. Obviously, that would delay that, that project and creation of that sports field, but that's to be determined. This 365000 would be for a regular, what I would call field, non-turf field, drainage work that needs to be done, plantings, the parking lot, the lights, the fencing, all those types of things that would need to be done. Um, so this would require, at, at whatever point in time we were to do that, that would require an additional contribution from the Parks and Rec Fund. Just want to be clear about that of uh, 245000 if we were to construct that sports field. And then phase five being the construction of the Four Season building at um, nearly $3 million, $2.9 million, is heavily reliant on state aid uh, through the New York State Division of Parks, which we've had some conversations about, and fundraising from the not-for-profit group. That would have no parks fund contribution for that. So I know there's a lot of moving pieces. So all in all, all five phases total, 2.2 million being raised by inclusion of motion, 3.5 million in expenses for the town of Canada. Um, of that 3.5 million, two-ish million is uh, almost uh, just over 2 million is state aid and other sources. And then um, the total combined of 5.8 for all five phases. Wow. <clears throat> Big project. And then you have the breakdown a little bit there that kind of spells that out and where the different funds are, are coming from. Um, the I think the biggest thing that I see in looking at this, if we were to build this all out according to all five phases, is about $245,000 difference that would need to be essentially made up by the town uh, through Parks Fund or other budgeting sources or whatever the case the rest all being covered if we were to do this. So this this creates the budget for it. It doesn't say we do all this, obviously. And you can't, there's no way that we would be able to start, for instance, phase five without the state aid or even phase four without the, the contributions and stuff. So have we completed phase one? Phase one is essentially complete, yes. Phase one, there's a so few things left for that, but phase one is uh, essentially getting finished up. Phase two is the construction of the, the pavilion that really kind of kicks off that next step. The plan for that is um, <clears throat> the phase two is we're waiting on a set of plans right now so that those can be reviewed and finalized so that we're not doing things two and three times. Um, and then the plan is to start right around Labor Day construction of that pavilion. They've got think big uh, inclusion of most and they already have the money. Um, we had another $65,000 contribution come in from the Sands family. The Sands family have generously also donating all of the uh, HVAC mechanical and plumbing work. Can we take that for and see what that is? Um, <clears throat> all of the HVAC mechanical and plumbing work for the pavilion. Uh, so the folks that are doing it at the Y um, are actually going to be coming down and doing all that for the pavilion also. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be rented out? So that has to be determined. They would like us, Lindsay and I have had some conversations about that. There's two sections inside the pavilion. One section on the left-hand side has half a dozen ADA inclusive picnic tables and those types of things. The other section is more of the grand entrance that has wheelchair, electric wheelchair charging stations. It has the restrooms. It has all the mechanicals, the concession stand, all that stuff. Um, that section over on the left, perhaps that might be able to be rented for like birthday parties or that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, but we've got to figure that, that piece out still to be determined. The concession area, which is on the right-hand side, um, <clears throat> we've got a great opportunity to actually work with ARC to help man that so that we could provide coffee, donuts, brownies, those types of things. 
and give an opportunity for maybe those individuals that are involved with ARC to kind of work towards that workforce transition like to more Star of a it exactly. actually would replace them or so well, they're looking for other locations yeah. they're yeah. moving over there yeah i tried to get i did you specifically talk to them this about is that? this is that attorney for the gentleman that's upstairs from the public defender's office can you sorry um <laughs> can you can you um specifically speak with them about moving into that area i'm sorry who uh arc yes okay yes because i invited them over to see it to take mm -hmm. a trip over and see it yeah and i think the big thing is they're going to want to see the pavilion and yeah. obviously the concession area and that yeah. sort of stuff so but we have some markups sketch ups we have the site plans etc yeah. et with that but yeah. it is getting a lot of use um mm -hmm. mike bentley tells me that they have been counting the group has been counting cars and people every time they go over and they're kind of keeping a log they think plus or minus 100 on average, about 100 people an hour are using it based on the times that they've spot checked it. I've been over there a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's a long line for the zip line. Yeah, the zip line is the most popular. Job done. Well, have a play on it. Yeah. Any other questions on this? Um, is the parks committee going to be going through this, or can we somehow just brought up? I mean, it was going to say, but um, in a in their next meeting or whatever, I'm just wanting their take on all of this as well. So, yeah, I know that the parks rec committee asked me to come to speak about Blue Heron and Uptown. I thought, I mean, we could certainly talk about this also. Yeah, we'll just well, it speaks to their advisory consents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. They got you. You got there. They looked at the overall plan at the very beginning, right? Yeah. They, yeah. So I thought. So. Okay. Any other questions on this one? That we good on that. Okay. Can you talk about the open space? Let me go see to make sure that that's all set. With that. Absolutely. This is a follow up from our. Um, I believe public hearing that's on earlier in the night for the use of open space funds, and that's for the purchase of the property, the land that has been discussed on Seneca Point Road, 476 Seneca Point Road. So um, based on how the public hearing goes, this would move forward with the use of the open space funds. Any questions on that? Okay. What's in the open space fund right now? I just have a budget report, so I don't have the balance off the top of my head, but we can definitely get that for you for Monday night so that you have it. Um, it's very well funded. It's yes. been contributed to quite a bit. I know there's at least half a million currently in a CD, um, and I believe there's Quite a bit more as well. So I'll get you the balance. Seems like 1.3 or something. I do think it's right around no, there. Yeah. That numbers yeah. in my head. I, I just like seeing yeah. where it's at when we're pulling it out in the reserve. Here. Yeah. No problem. No problem at all. The next resolution moves into the property on 3950 County Road 16. I believe this was a request of the board to have this resolution on the agenda for this month's meeting. Do you want to say anything more about that, Jerry? Um, most likely, we will table it indefinitely because there's some other options that are coming up uh, that might be out there. So we will have a public hearing. I, I intend to have it a one-time shot with a public hearing. We'll open it, then we'll close it. When people are done sharing their thoughts, we won't continue it. Um, we might, we'll, we'll have to come back and make a decision on it, but if we table it indefinitely, then when things start to, if, if things play out like we're hoping, then we'll have other options to bring to the table later on down the road. And then we can bring it back to a vote on what we want to do if those opportunities present themselves. So and there's only not, two more town board meetings until the end of that option. Until September, period. Right. We have until, so oh. essentially, um, it would be, I mean, hopefully, ideally by August, we'll be able to have a vote on it okay. with that, uh, with the whole picture in mind of what options are available. Um, you know, worst case scenario, 
as September, but hopefully it's August that we'll have um, that other information that we'll be able to present publicly and then discuss in the board on that. The next resolution is for letter of credit. Do you, did you want to mention anything about this? Your office. It's seven. just a normal. Um, it's a real letter of credit for um, center point apartments or doing the next phase of the apartments out there. So, will this be uh, the? Um, was it going to build similar in style construction to? It's that corner piece that's been vacant yeah. that they're going to prove for decades. decades. <laughs> yeah. So we're there. finally going to see the steps have something connected. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Good. It's going to be more than changing the name of the place to the retreat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the lake house at Canada. Yeah, I think it's a separate LLC. I think yeah. with everything that happens, it's a separate parcel. There's a separate, yeah. but they're not getting, are they doing a separate entrance too or no? Are they doing it? No, they're just going to use them. Which one is it? Yerkes and uh, Rick 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 Rick. They're saying you like the name, Terry? Yeah. Retreat. I mean, yeah, that sounds kind nice. of a, yeah, everybody likes it. It sounds it upscale. Either yeah. that or surrender. I know. <laughs> I was going to say it sounds like it's like a statement. Uh, next resolution is the court tape. Why not? Let's kind of walk through this. I mean, so <clears throat> let me just share with you all. Judge Prell is very proud of the fact that, um, you know, we met, you might remember, was it three years ago, we hired. Yeah. Book right, Kathy is what I call her. Yeah. Like she, does, she helps the uh, reconciliation for the town justices, and specifically Justice Prowl. Uh, Justice Jones' account has some challenges, but Justice Prowl's account is is uh, very, very close to being netted out. And uh, Judge Prowl is very, very proud of that fact and has worked very closely with um, Kathy Sandek and Explain. And Kristen as well. Yeah, yeah, Kristen, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yes. So um, there was a memo drawn up, which is attached to, to this resolution, and that came to Jared and the town board from Judge Pro. And he simply just uh, had Kathy break down in pieces. So the judges each have a bail account that they operate, as well as a general operating account. So each judge has two accounts. And the ultimate um, result of the bank reconciliation is that there's a little bit of movement between those two accounts, as well as a return to some of some outstanding items. And that will, as Doug said, result in a net uh, zero for both of those accounts, which is what you want each month that that nets out to zero. They're paying things out and they're moving their payments to the state. There is a small portion that would need to come from the town's um, expense account that I believe totals $48 and some change. And that simply isn't $48 some, and 68 cents. 68 cents. Thank you. Yeah. And that that just puts it at that zero amount. So um, Judge Paul had recommended that come out of their expense line for the courts as a typical expense for each each year so um, ultimately in this case we're acknowledging these transactions the town board doesn't really have anything to do with the way he operates but acknowledging that this is the case and it sounds like um, any checks will be issued over to the state for them to reissue so it wouldn't even be our responsibility to reissue and this is actually just this is judge Burrell's accounts. Judge Jones's accounts are in excess of twenty thousand dollars off, and has been a very has been a big challenge. Mm -hmm. And um, the state court system, you may remember, probably four or five years ago, we asked the state court to audit both of the judges' accounts. Uh, they have now audited those. Uh, that really has nothing to do with us. Um, Judge Perel's accounts are, like I said, this, this $48 will, will close that out. The other account, um, it's probably going to go on for quite some time um, unless uh, the judge wants to help make it correct. And that has been a challenge. So. Mm -hmm. Do they, uh, does the state, whoever audited them, do they have authority to say, from what I understand, no, because they're elected officials, that even though it's off that much, that um, they can do 
letters, they can do any number of different things, but from what I understand, because they're elected officials, they, they're protected by the officer law, and there's really not a lot they can do. So is there, I mean, this has to be reconciled somehow at some point, I would think, and is it just roll out into the future? Or is it... I, I think that's probably what would happen. And from what I understand from some conversations that I've had is that it will probably continue until such point in time you close out that account. And the only time that that account would get closed is if that particular judge is no longer elected to office and a new judge would have to open a new account. That's been going on for years. Yes. So how long has there been this disparity? I mean, is it, are we talking at least 10 years probably? It's 20,000 in our deficit or 20,000, it says 20,000 off, in which direction? Essentially, they're, they're most of that, right? Well, it's so it goes excess. back and forth. It's in excess. It's in excess. But, it's, in the but what Kathy Sandek has found is like, for instance, bail was refunded twice to the same people. Mm -hmm. And so it's all that kind of stuff. It's mm -hmm. just very, yes. very cumbersome. Mm -hmm. At that point, when it gets closed out, I mean, at some point it will. At some point it will, right. Does, I mean, whether it's a surplus or a negative, what happens to that? Do you have any idea? Or does the town have to make that up if it's a negative or balance, or the town get the revenue if it's positive? I imagine, the, I imagine we'd, we'd have to make up the negative. I'm sure we'll have to make up the negative, and surplus would go to the state. state. Yeah, essentially, it'll get it'll go through the comptroller's office. That's where it all gets reported. Yeah, just so up here, it would. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But the challenge here is in. in you all know this, right? For instance, you as the town board members are actually charged with oversight of the fiscal operations, even though you have little to no authority to correct that, but you're still responsible for it. So it still shows up in the audit. And in the most recent audits, you know that we couldn't even finalize the audits. And so it's just there. It's, you know, it, it's... So who's, who speaks to this? Who says you're way off base? <clears throat> well, that's why we asked, you know, so long ago for the audit coming directly from the, the state court office. And so and it's ignored. essentially, yes. Okay. So really they're the ones that would have any sort of, they would have the teeth. most, right? The yeah. most teeth, the judicial yeah. district, correct? Yeah. Okay. So the seventh district. Not very modest there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at least, you know, the one account will be completely reconciled and everything, you know, everything, the other one. Yeah. Um, and Kathy's she's continuing to work on it. She she and I like the worst, but she she's yep. she's really, really putting in a lot of effort to help reconcile and identify with both accounts as much as we possibly can. She's working very hard to, to do that. So is the situation getting better then from what you're saying? Or from when that, Kathy started to today, oh yeah, yeah, yes, probably, yes, undoubtedly it is so way from that better. that point forward is... Absolutely. Right, that's good. That's yeah. good, right. Yeah, it hasn't it hasn't gotten worse, which is good, actually, yeah. in this particular yeah. situation. Yeah, Kristen does a good fabulous job of working with Kathy. Everything right. forward is, is in great shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 196, this is the Winx. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> I believe Doug and I spoke with you at the April or May town board meeting. Um, this is the property owner over on Grimble Road who um, submitted, requested their surety from 2009 mm -hmm. to be released. And um, as I mentioned at that meeting, I have contacted Canadigo National Bank, and we went back through the records back to 2010. Absolutely nothing in those dollar amounts or to those people. Um, we have no record of it being released. And I know with 99.9% .9 of our sureties, this one being an exception, there's always been that paper trail of the deposit and the release 
Um, so um, they did submit the notarized letter as we requested. Um, so this is what brings the uh, resolution. Um, I don't I was waiting for the resolution before um, I gave it to Kate to put it into the, um, the ENCODE system. So needed some mm -hmm. approval or denial of the resolution before we went ahead and did the, the next step. I'll note as well that this is going to hit on expense account. Uh, because when we did the audit of our bids and guarantees, it was not something that mm -hmm. was listed in our records. Right. That's Jean and I have had that challenge. We don't have it listed. So I don't have it in bids and guarantees. Mm -hmm. So to release this, it will be charged as an expense to the um, 2022 oh, so budget. you added that. Thank you. Yeah. So any questions? Anything else that you need before Monday night's meeting? Because I will not be here. I'll be in the head around that. <laughs> you might remember from our conversation with this, the town attorney recommended that we get a letter that would actually serve as an affidavit if you yeah. don't yeah. like the notarized statement. Out. So that's yeah. why we have that. Yeah. Uh, the next resolution is the appointment of a part-time clerk to the town justice we've been talking about. It's been desperately needed. Yes. Good. Yeah, so the judges held a couple interviews. We were able to select a great candidate. Her name is Ashley, and she has started her training. So. She's very nice. Yeah, she'll be a great asset to that team. Tree sponsorship, Lindsay. Okay, so this is just authorization for the creation of a tree sponsorship program. So very similar to our bench sponsorship program that we currently have that has been very popular. Um, it would be $400 to purchase the tree. Um, and it, it will include a stone that is engraved um, with a couple words that the person who is you know, choosing the sponsorship. It'll also include the species in the year. Um, we've had a lot of interest in that. We have support from the tree team and the Parks and Rec Committee. So this is just to authorize us to create that program. Are you doing mini specimen trees for this then? Yes. Yep. So the species that will be selected from our arborist on the tree team, and then um, the person can select which park, but we choose the location based on the arborist recommendation. And then the next resolution puts it into the fee schedule. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, I think that's the only change on the fee schedule. No, there's oh. also um, Rebecca and Heather went to the Southern Tier um, training program down at Houghton College and brought back a lot of information. And one of the things they said is that the state recommends, and actually it's on the form that anybody that does a genealogy, actually there's a breakdown in terms of number of years that we are researching, it depends on how much they pay. So we need to upgrade, amend that. And then also um, anybody that's requesting any type of vital statistics, it's a $10 fee, whether we have it the record or not. So um, to help cover the costs. And then what happens is instead of giving them a letter or a phone call, they actually get a certificate saying that the record is not on file. So it's kind of, covering all the bases and doing things per um, vital records in Albany. So those it's so it's um, updating the genealogy costs, um, putting in the ten dollar fee for um, search and copies, and then the tree sponsorship program. So just real quick on the tree sponsorship, the, the rock. One of the things I know I've talked to a number of you and we had Gary Davis's family had reached out mm -hmm. to us about doing a tree here and then we could do the rock. I'm going to make an assumption here that that is a in-kind contribution on behalf of the town of Canandaigua and that we're going to let the family kind of pick the wording, help pick the wording that goes on the rock and we'll pass awesome. that here. So, Very cool. Yeah. Uh, Next resolution, 200, community choice aggregation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that I might. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Terry. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> we have talked to uh, people. We have uh, MRB helping us uh, uh, search for uh, uh, a third party uh, administrator. And uh, Jewel has worked with the city of Canandaigua. Town of Victor, Brighton, a bunch of others around the state. 
and they um, seem to have the expertise that's needed to, you know, pursue this. Now we we probably all read and heard about what happened in the city of Canandaigua that the uh, entity that was hired to deliver the power uh, what was a source source. Something I can't remember the source, something. Um, they defaulted yeah. anyway yeah. on a payment to NISO, NYISO, New York State Independent uh, Service Organization, the people that provide the power. It's all coordinated by the state or very loosely coordinated, really. Anyway, they, they, they defaulted on $1.2 million payment and so the whole thing collapsed. Everybody in the city switch back to uh, RG and E and that created you know quite a bit of angst with people and because they were paying something like 4.2 cents a kilowatt hour for the energy use uh, the delivery is the same there's two components to your electric bill the delivery charge and the amount of power you use but this only addresses the amount of power that you actually use and the power was coming being sold to them at like 4.2 cents when the going rate was eight something and change eight cents. So, you know, everything took a jump up. Well, there was a, we talked with uh, Rhonda, what's her name, just uh, D, start with D, um, came down uh, this past Monday and uh, Jan Goodwin came in and was talking about their experience with uh, with Jewel and we had nothing to praise for Jewel. They, they do a great job. Um, and they're in a position now where they're going to go back out looking for a provider of power. So in essence, they're about the same position we are at this point in time. But it's it's, it's the city, we are at the same position they are, but today is the city, Brighton, Victor, other entities that Geneva is talking about getting in. So there could be more buying power, which might drive the cost further down if a provider could be found. Now the city had a their finance, their planning and finance committee met uh, Tuesday evening, and they had uh, a recording of it on uh, uh, Facebook. I listened to yesterday from uh, the guy that uh, uh, is uh, not the CEO, but he's like the number two guy in Jewel. And he outlined what happened. And what happened was that there was a, this transfer of payment wasn't made. So the provider, source, whatever they are, um, was uh, in essence booted out of the state. Can't do business here anymore. They kept John on Monday, and then the, this guy uh, Tuesday evening mm -hmm. indicated that they defaulted on a payment, and there were a lot of other issues. Nobody's ever said what the other issues are, but um, the question was asked of him. Well, did you vet these people? You know, what kind of due diligence did you do looking at this? And he said, yes, we did. He said, we, you know, they supposedly had reserves enough to cover any, you know, issues that might develop, but he said it evaporated. So, you know, it's one of those things that it sounded to me like, you know, you're doing business with somebody and you do the best you can, but stuff happens. But we're at a point now where we have to decide whether we move forward with this, with this resolution and execute that agreement to use um, Jewel uh, as a uh, third party administrator. We don't have to go forward with them. They will search and try to find somebody to provide power, but they're going to be doing this for a number of municipalities at the same time. So the aggregate buying power should attract some attention. So, um, that's pretty much where it stands right now. So, uh, yeah, we saw this, so there's no cost to the town. They, yeah, there aren't being no. medical nothing. Okay. No, they just, I don't know. I don't understand how anyone makes money on this. Yeah, you can apply it. It's, it's a, in one sense, it's kind of like a you know, three shell game, you know, where's the B, you know, it's a, but it works and it had worked. John indicated that. They had saved about one point seven million dollars over the eighteen months that the uh, contract was enforced. Started in January twenty twenty one. It ended well, effectively like the end of May. They still had six seven months to go on it, but you know now they're they're back on RG&E like 
probably most of us are paying their rates, but um, I don't think we have any risk involved here. We're not risking any uh, anything financially. We can always say, no, we don't want to do it. So they'll come up with people that will provide the power. And we get to make the decision. So it looks like a, a reasonable thing to do at this point in time. That's about all I know about her. <laughs> so I will admit there is a certain murkiness about the whole thing, but it works. I mean, people around the state are doing it. How that's done, I mean, people generating power, uh, somehow it's being sold at like half the rate. And that just, I, in the other municipalities, the city of Canada, Brighton and Victor, they had specifically designated it had to be clean energy too. Yeah. So if we go in, it would be the same. If we're going with yeah, that, you'd, you'd have, <clears throat> they would present various combinations. Right. You know, maybe it's it's a hydropower plus nuclear plus solar or you know right. it's, it, that's to be determined by whoever is willing to put that package together and come in and make right, that presentation. That's kind of like step two or three at this point. No, this, no. This, yeah, is this is just us working with Joel. This just opens the door so we can see what's inside. A completely side note discussion with um, Tom Harvey about a week or so ago at the county. In our part of New York, Western New York, we're something like 92% of our energy already comes from renewable sources. Mm -hmm. Oh, you had a lot of hydropower. Right. You know, so, from... I mean, we're <clears throat> way ahead of the game. Yeah. So, that 92%. So, everybody can give themselves a pat on the back for, Thank you, for participating <laughs> in that. It's, it's not specific to this resolution, but I know I had put in my uh, AR report to you two weeks ago when I was, before I got sick. Um, Kate had worked with uh, the entity that was doing the energy audit for us. And I had a follow-up conversation earlier this week. Um, with very few exceptions, they hardly ever find, uh, know that they can't save an entity money, but they found with us that we were already paying reduced rates for the town of Canada, I guess, specifically energy cost, and there was no savings to be found for us. So um, it was great. It's, it's great good. news. It's very good news. It means we haven't been overpaying. Uh, I was told this week about another entity that they did that for uh, Orange County, and they saved almost a million dollars a year in savings that the county was overpaying for energy. Ouch. Uses. So uh, we're in really good shape for that. Um, resolution 201 is really finance. It's just the Agriculture Committee. I'll skip it unless somebody asks something that they want to ask on that. Um, I had asked at the last town board meeting if they could define the number of members for that. Um, I'm glad they observed the discrepancy that they were over on the number of members, but um, they didn't. They, there's no change on this. It just says a minimum of five members. And I think most of our committees, <laughs> all of our committees indicate a total number of members. I don't really care if it's six or seven or nine, or, but I think we should indicate the number of members rather than setting a minimum of five. So um, do you have to do a motion when you doing to amend the local law? Well, if the town board wants to do that, right? So the Agriculture Committee, I know, meets tonight. Um, I know that in the past, that's not what they were recommending. I'll bring it up to them again tonight to see if they want to revisit that. But ultimately, that's a town board decision. So. The next resolution, 202, is the subdivision of land. I don't know if anybody has any questions on that. It's not really. Quote unquote finance related. Um, the next one is so that one we have a public hearing one earlier. <clears throat> the next one, 203, is actually setting a public hearing for next month on the new agriculture protection overlay. Questions on that? Okay. okay, next resolution, 204. So this so it doesn't, doesn't have a over. monetary impact. Doesn't have a monetary impact on us. It's one I brought over from the county. We're joining in on the county, looking up, looking for state, um, basically a shared resource grant for digital and electronic um, 
contracting so we can track our contracts electronically. The county is getting all the municipalities, municipalities interested and involved, uh, no cost to us. Uh, the grants approved, we have the benefit and the ultimate goal is no cost to the towns. Um, any cost will be absorbed through the grant or through the county. Do you know when the the announcement of the grants would be come out, did they say? I do not have that. Okay. I can find out from Chris when we might know. And the only thing about this is Gene is our records management officer. And I know Gene and I had a conversation. There's mm -hmm. still some logistics yeah. in terms of how the contracts are actually that need to be. So Gene's going to need to talk to somebody at the county itself. Right. As yeah. we get closer. And yeah. Getting, yeah, if it gets granted, yeah. funded in that. I'm sure there will be training and discussion. Well, my big thing is Perfect. the data, the storage mm -hmm. of the town's data yeah. and how that's going to be, how that's all going to work. Yeah. So, but yeah, we'll if, if you cloud. don't mind when it gets to that point, mm -hmm. including me, yes. that'd be great. We'll just go to the cloud. Yeah, yeah, you know, that cloud. There. Yeah, don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> You're going to turn red. Right? Right. Never <laughs> just lie. It never goes away. Whenever you need it, it's there. <laughs> oh. Records management. Oh, the bank of your existence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think it would be good. Um, it definitely will help if if it does get funded. I think it will definitely help the town as a whole. Um, track contracts yeah. and that kind of stuff. But it's definitely a positive thing. And like Doug said, it's if it gets funded, it's the background logistic things yes. that we'll have to figure out. Mm -hmm. Uh, resolution 205 is resolution of support for a CFA application that you guys had already approved. This is for parks. Lindsay's going to get lots of money and do wonderful yes. things. Yes, we are. <laughs> Let's hope so. So, um, the big thing is ADA accessibility. accessibility. Yeah. Is that for and, all the parks? Yeah. Starting, yeah, starting off of the momentum with Motion Junction mm -hmm. just in the community. So, it would it include a project for Outhouse Park, Blue Heron, Pierce, and Onanda, which are all in our um, implementation guide for the mm -hmm. parks master plan. So, and we're able to, um, if we were granted these funds, then we could do the project over, I believe, five years. And then, if oh, I'm not mistaken, 50% yep. match. It is, yeah. So, we really helps to our goals. Cheer mm -hmm. towards, but it helps get us there. So yeah, so this only is going to need a capital park. Yes, the mm -hmm. outside of parks. Correct. This is the parks only. Yeah. yeah. Uh, resolution two hundred six is actually also same exact thing. This is a letter, a resolution of support for the grant application for the new water meters that you guys have already approved us to. To do this is the resolution and support. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can I go back real quick? Sure. Did we want to list um like Janet Park in that list in case we decide to do it? This is specific line item dollar amounts that have been identified for each of those parts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the same for the water meters. Any questions on that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, those are both resolutions of support. 207, we had a committee member resign. Unfortunately, just couldn't do it anymore, right? From the cemetery committee. Yeah, that was fast. Time. Yeah, it was really fast, but at that time, um, and between some staff members leaving. Can we still give them a letter? Thanks. <laughs> But thankfully, we have another volunteer who is happy to take over that position. We actually had a few to choose from, which was nice. Mm -hmm. And so Mary um, has been in participation at all of our meetings and has been really active. I think she'll be a great member of the new committee. Uh, then there's a standard zone erosion control um, mm -hmm. surety there, $1,300, just acceptance of that. And then the last resolution, it's in, I apologize, it's at the end of the agenda. It's not up with the finance stuff where it really belongs, but I threw it off the last minute. You remember we had released an RFP for uh, traffic analysis for what we call the gateway area, Brickyard Road, in that area up around Ace Hardware, the Geneco piece. We had three responses, which was awesome. Good. They ranged in price from $25,000 to $68,000. Uh, the lowest responsible bidder was CPL. That's the one I'm recommending. Um, I also really appreciated CPL all through the RFP process had reached out to me multiple times, making sure that they understand it. You'll see in their proposal that's attached to the agenda, they even included 
Um, the survey of the proposed access road crossing Geneco property, they understand exactly what we're looking for, where they need to count. They identified at the key intersections. I feel like they have the best understanding of all the entities that we received the proposals from and what we're looking for. And it also happens to be the lowest bid. So that was nice. Can't go wrong. Um, the only thing is, it is $25,000 and that is not budgeted. So what I'm proposing to do is to use $25,000 in unassigned fund balance to increase the 22 budget to cover that expense. Yeah. So, yeah, it needs to get done. And by the way, that would go into the engineering line, which I believe will end up having extra money at the end of the year. Like Adeline, you and I talked, I think there's $15,000 in that line for middle church road easements. Whether or not we get to that this year, or whether we can start that and encumber the, the stuff, there's still questions about those types of things. So, yeah. when do they have to present this part or the answers to the RFP? The data, I believe. I believe. Ah, the project proposal is not printed out on mine. I want to say it's January. I think it's January. Trying to get the work concluded this year quickly. Mm -hmm. So, so now for our other, I think we're on the other business. Yeah, and then we need to talk about water, water business. Um, Jim, why don't you start to introduce this? Can you go to agenda and this agenda, and then town manager reports? And then I took all the stuff that you sent me, as well as all the stuff the guy sent me. Is all in that section so that we can pull it up and look at it. So, sorry, Jim, if you want to. No, it's fine. Please. Um, and the M drive. And the M drive. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Recent water, I'm sorry, not even, well, recent water ability, but recent meter update. Uh, we were uh, out replacing water meters in the water district, and we had recently updated. Mr. Ilya's water meter, <clears throat> and he had been for a year receiving what we consider actual readings from the endpoint that we were receiving. So we had no reason to know or feel that there was a error with the billing. But when we exchanged the meter and the endpoint, the registered part, there was a a lot of water had been gone through the water meter versus what he had been filled. And I believe, and I'm correct if I'm wrong, Courtney, when I say this, that that is where lies the problem is he wasn't correctly billed for years for the water that was consumed through the meter. For whatever reason, I don't have an answer why the register wasn't setting the correct information to the endpoint that, that we were collecting because he was receiving pretty much minimum mm -hmm. bills for oh, years. Right. All right. And then it wasn't until recently when we started seeing an estimate and we went, that's why we went out to change the meter because we're like, well, something's wrong. So let's go out and figure out why we're now getting an estimate on the bill itself. So the last reading I can't recall, just say it was 150. And when we got the meter, it was 880. So it was a difference of like 666,000 gallons of water, which is 66,600 per thousand. That's a new meter. Um, I'm not sure if the uh, old meter. The old one's in here too. Uh, so far. So, what you know, like did that was okay. You last reading was 150, new readings 88. The difference is 666. So here's your bill for three thousand dollars. Is what is what you know, like did. Um, I spoke to Mr. Elia. Actually, what started most of this was he had a leak, mm -hmm. uh, which we did get notified about because this hot water tank did split. So myself, we sent Mike Boyce out there and we sent Courtney also called Mike to let him know he had a leak. That was on June 21st. Yeah, June 21st, which is very nice to have that 
information now with these new meters that inform not only us, but it also informs the resident as long as they sign up for the eye on water. Okay, but this here is uh, one of the courtesies that the town's providing now to the end user if there's an issue with their water itself. Now, I understand why He's not thrilled about his three thousand dollar water bill. I get that. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, the water meter was working itself. The register part that turns from the brass Newtain disc was registering the water. The issue was why it didn't register communicate to the endpoint back to us correctly. I don't have an answer for that. Well, I have no idea. But here's where we're at after a couple of years of receiving water at a minimum bill. So what he's, and this is attached to my report, so you guys will see this because we, we do it in the direction of the town court, but what he's saying, and I'm just gonna read you his conclusion, that it's a faulty meter that was replaced. The faulty meter was charging the minimum $26.10 for 6,000 gallons. He said, my bill, actual average gallons are showing 3,000 gallons. The town is charging him $3,060.42 for water that passed through a faulty meter. The hot water tank leak ran through the new water meter at 16,000 gallons. It was metered from 6.1 to 6.27, $28, uh, $46, 10,000 gallons, $74. So he checked his eye on water. He's been watching that ever since then. He does the calculations. So he believes, as Jim said, that he is being charged for an estimated 666,000 gallons of water that went through that meter that he believes is faulty because his annual estimate based on the new meter is 1,000 or 135,432 gallons. Mm -hmm. So he thinks that that 666,000 gallons of water is not correct that he's being charged for. Right. That's correct. Does that make sense for residential usage of yeah. that period that he'd go through 600,000 gallons of water? Not in one quarter. No, not in one quarter anytime, but I mean, Over years. If, if we look at the minimum, at least for how long it's been doing the minimum, does that make sense that he could use that one? Uh, I say, although it's a rental house. So I have I have no idea what anybody's usage is. You know, we don't track that for anybody in particular. <clears throat> and the other thing, you know, is like when it says actual read, it's not a there's not a question for us to to question the bill. If it kept saying estimate, 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 then there then we know there's something wrong with that M1. Okay, so that's that's not right or wrong. It's just there's not a there's not a question in my mind that there's a problem with the endpoint of the register, so we don't one we don't track people's usage because that's there's no point in doing that. If you use a lot, use a lot. Use a little, use a little. It's not anything that we maintain or tell anybody what their average is. That's completely. I mean, I, I know that if you have college kids come home for the summer, people's water bills go up because they're doing more laundry and more showers. Uh, you know, we do get conversations like that sometimes where bills go up. But I have no idea who's been in the house, or what's been done to the house, or anything. I'm just wondering if that seems like a normal residential usage. I can't answer that. So he's claiming that his usage based on the new meter per year is 135,000 gallons a year. Is it has it been longer than five years that it's been an actual reading? You know, I printed it and I didn't bring it because I actually went back. I don't know if it's been five. You know, I printed it off on purpose yesterday because I like I wanted to hit it, but I wasn't expecting to actually. No, I don't want to say it's been five years because uh, we've been getting reads, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. Like I said, the register, that's the part where the numbers are. For whatever reason wasn't telling the endpoint the correct number. Okay. Well, you guys can talk about this again on Monday night because it, it listed under other board business on the agenda. We, you guys are going to have to give us some direction. He's requesting a waiver of the full three thousand dollars. So he wants a 
the full 3,000 waived, so just he's paying the minimum right. that he paid with no increase. That's his request. That's his request. So, but yeah, the investment, he's using 100. He's 135,000 yes. a year, so, so we can based figure. Based on only 10 days of ion water. That's, yeah. He's only watched ion water for 10 yes. days. And, and that's extrapolated that for the year. Yeah. So that's it. I did go through the, with Mr. Ilya. I went through his history. I went through his usage. And we tracked the last 12 months. And there is an absolute usage of at least $917 of change. Um, I did explain that to him. And he understands um, that that was usage. As far as the leak goes, that was calculated after the new uh, meter and endpoint were installed. So that was, you know, that was the leak. And then the usage are two different meters. So the the usage where that calculation is coming from is the old endpoint that was still sending us accurate you know reads with that minimum amount. Um, the new meter is what's showing the leak, and so he has information from Ion Water for that sixteen thousand gallons, which was where the leak uh, occurred. Um, Ion Water before that he did not have with his other. So what's leaking? Is it the meter that's leaking? No, he it, had a hot water tank. tank. So that's not our. It's not, that's no. not us. I mean, right. if it leaks, it leaks. It's not our fault. Right. Correct. No. And the um, what again is what well, the town, I should, I should say, town, what Munich Lake did was took the last reading the last quarter. We took the physical manual read of the register, plugged it in the Munich Lake, and came up with 666. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's Which is how a regular practice when a new meter is installed. Right. You always enter the manual read. That's that's an ongoing practice when a meter is taken out okay. and a uh, new one's installed. So he's out. Uh, I mean, I would ask the same question. I'm not saying it's wrong to ask the town board to do something, but we've not, we in my 13 years, we have not lowered someone's water bill because they didn't feel they used it or didn't feel they felt it was excessive or felt that it was wrong. Um, and you so know, you said this is Kramer Road, right? We have Kramer. our we have our meters. We know that that amount of water passed through. It's not right. like it disappeared or something. Like Correct. That. So it went through our meters. We know it was used mm -hmm. and it went to this location. Right. Right. We yeah, we have city for it. So how confident are you in the in the accuracy of that? That formula? That six 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 number. Oh, very. I mean, because I have no no problem okay. with with going. Okay, look, here's the last reading we had, which is loaded into the tablet, which then goes out, and then these guys brought the physical meter. We actually have a picture of it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Sure. it's we actually have a picture of the old register. That's the yeah, new register. So. It's in there. Yeah, it's yeah. it's the PDF. It's the so we're probably going to ask you to go through all this Monday, but it's if I go. I'm not sure which one of these came to be honest with you. Were we able to confirm that the former meter worked and that, it, that there was not an error with the actual meter? Just um, we I can't I answer that right now, yeah. Adeline. Okay, I could ask take it down to the um, bench testing. Device the city of Kinewa has, and they use that to test our meters yeah. for accuracy. Might be helpful. Yeah, so just, just to, have to it. make sure it's accurate. Right. So he's not correct. Just can't say that it was. Our fee schedule that, does charge the, the yeah, customer it if it's yeah. not if it's accurate. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. we that could also be a discussion. Maybe that's something that town pays for if it is accurate. Mm -hmm. That could be an arrangement. <clears throat> Our fee schedule is uh, 150, I believe it is, to you know, have it go down, get tested, and have someone certify that I tested this meter. It's within the tolerances of the meter itself. So I think for due diligence, it'd be worth it to do yeah. that. Even if we have to. Yeah. Can you scroll down a little bit of that? Even if show we have the whole to... number, uh, the other register. There it is. Yeah. So there's 800,000, 1,500. So I'm going to want Mr. Nadler to weigh in on this too. Well, we have, I mean, it's pretty clear. We have Jim has the authority uh, with our water policy. Um, but in this particular case, the town code says that uh, 
a resident may make an appeal to the town board. Mm -hmm. You can either say yes or no, or essentially that's it. Right. You can either, with the appeal that he's making for the waiver, it basically he's appealing it to the town board. So you can either uphold his appeal and agree with him and say it's so forgiven. Yeah, so his appeal is, <clears throat> I want to pay what I paid. Correct. My minimum charge. That's his appeal. Right. That is his appeal. So, so okay. you can either say yes or no, essentially, at that. Now, you could also, you could say to Jim, uh, per the water policy, to, it gives a little bit of discretion, like if you wanted to arrange a payment plan to give the guy a right. little bit of a help. Uh, so he doesn't have to pay the $3,000 all at once. We've had to do that before with people who had leaks, actually, with his neighbor. He had, unfortunately, he just didn't have money because it, it leaked between the house and the meter pit. So he made payments to the town. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and that worked out. Uh, so this is an old meter and those are all being replaced? This is one of the older meters, but what triggered us was we started seeing an estimate. It wasn't actual. Uh -huh. So we're like, okay, we got to go out and find out why we're not getting an actual read. So I had that happen in my house once. So um, all of a sudden they were there and they said, we got to replace your meter mm -hmm. because it was coming in at zero or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it had been the end of the summer and a drought. And I thought, why didn't I want in my yard? But I mean, it was within the, within the last billing cycle that they realized that the meter was bad. Well, we might know when we build that quarter, or we'll get a list of hampers, errors, uh, estimates. So we start going through the list of, okay, we do 20 letters because we can't do everybody at once because then that overwhelms trying to do our normal work. Get those done, do the next 20 and move them out, out, out through. So just like with the new water meters that Courtney's put out letters, we did 50 last time. We try to do 50, get those 50 done, and then we'll move on again. So, and then how we many tried, meters in the town? Uh, all right, 2,700. Mm -hmm. But we don't need them all replaced, right? We're, right now, we're focusing on the ones that are 10 years older or ones that we have issues with reading. But that's just for towns that are consolidated. Right. So then there's another double that for the rest of the town. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I think it makes the most sense to just to cover our bases, mm -hmm. do due diligence, make sure the meter is accurate. Yeah. And then we can say the meter's, meter's accurate and he's not debating that it was at reading at 150% of what he mm -hmm. actually used. He's saying, I don't want to pay for any of what I use, but right. saying it's accurate, then that six, okay. six, six number. Is he the up. renter or the property owner? He's a property mm -hmm. owner. Mm -hmm. So then that number stands up. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I defend Courtney. I mean, she spent, oh, how many phone calls? with him on the phone. Mm -hmm. Oh God, must have been a dozen. Uh, it was quite a few. Yeah. He is the type of person he would calls and calls and calls. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our new phone system actually tracks the number of calls that I get from the same number. And so it pops up. I have 23 calls from him in the last Sounds two accurate. months. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I let, it's like borderline. Questioning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he was hoping he would, one of us would slip, mm -hmm. say something that, you know, would something change. Something different that might change. Because right. yeah. so, yes. I made it clear to him that I don't have the authority to mm -hmm. make this decision. And I gave Doug the heads up, like, look, this is coming. Here's what's happening. And I told him he needs to speak to write a letter to Doug, and then Doug will take the information to the town board and we'll discuss it. You think he'd come to the town board meeting? Yeah, he did. Yeah. I, I don't think he wants to. He, he submitted the letter, you guys right. will see it, that's attached. I think that's the extent of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, he wants um, he wants relief from it, but we also have a water policy. So the water policy is actually very clear that he's being charged for it. Jim has the ability to enforce that. And then the uh, section of code that allows him to appeal, he's made his appeal, and then you guys either say yeah. yes or no to right. appeal, and that's really it. Yeah. I think we just agree clear that we weren't in error here, that there wasn't something right. that we. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I doubt by Monday night I'll have that 
would report back for that meter just so okay. you know i think today's thursday yeah they're yeah. i just don't you know so i will i ask but i don't know okay, okay. So we can do that and um in the meantime though what he's going to say is well do i have to pay the bill well the bill the bill needs to stand unless his appeal is right. the bill needs to stand it won't really right. we can say we can waive lay charges on that did he speak to you about that. SHCH? yeah we're going to suspend it yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah so let's just hypothetically say we don't do that until august because we didn't get back to mm -hmm. say look we're not ignoring you just we're test this meter for accuracy and we'll discuss it at the August meeting. We can waive any late, late fees if yep. things are normal. Okay. It's not the end of the we might right. wait in our 30 days, but I think the policy allows you to waive one one per yeah. year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. Yeah. We have quite a few this month, haven't we? I guess and the other thing <laughs> is is you got to be careful because of October 31st mm -hmm. is coming as well. Mm -hmm. So he needs to be. Hey, 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 watch your mouth. October's not here yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, I'm just saying. Hey, we're, hey. I know. How do you do that with yeah. the levy? Uh, yeah, this week last time. Okay, you guys pulled them out. Pulled that from whoever yes. else. Okay, that's yeah. fine. However, you want to do that, that's fine. Um, it was. Um, Stephanie, Stephanie um, Coons, yes, you know, she has a meter pit, she's at least, I don't know, she's way off the road, mm -hmm. there's a spot where it leaked, she's like, I can't afford to pay it, and so we said, well, we'll make payments, so. Is it all on Kramer Road? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's all over. <laughs> Place, so. Maybe we should uh, shut the road from yeah. the well, you know, now with the ion water, that was one of the things we did focus on the first out was meter pits because they tend to leak. Yeah, so I'm sorry that's not mm -hmm. going for risk. Yeah, so Carrie, I don't know if you're prepared to talk about water, uh, Canada or Farmington, since we have the whole board here in terms of. You know, well, since we are talking about water, what we're going to do, and we need to get that grant moving forward, and then if we administer yeah. or not. And... Yeah, that's what as well. Um, the study we had done in the uptown area, we had gotten those results in June, and um, it you know confirmed uh, a lot of Time to go on stuff that we thought we knew. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go too. Uh, maybe no. Maybe Monday. I'll give this just quick. We have to get back into the um, proposal that was put together by Farmington. What we need to do is to send a letter of intent to Farmington that will trigger them to go back to MRB to go out and rebid the project. And uh, Greg says that he can. So some of the stuff we learned, you can modify the project a little bit. You can't you can't go back in with the same uh, bid package and say, here's, uh, here's what we want you to do. So Greg will modify that, go back out, get bids, come back in. Farmington will review them with us. And then you know, a decision will be made on how to proceed. But in essence, that package that we did see early this year will be what winds up being and the okay. uh, 165 foot tall water tower and right. uh, all the associated pumping and piping and, and all of that. So, but we we do need to uh, revisit the uh, the uh, well the easement to cross uh, Dave Janeco's property has been filed. And Greg says we have a labor and paint checker so. He said, we don't need anything else. You know, Dave can say whatever he wants, but it's been filed and it's a legal document. So he said, what we can do is shift where that uh, trail, which could be widened out to become a road over so that it covers where this water line will be for the trail and leave space and gravel perhaps for a uh, roadway, which would lessen his, Dave Janekel's uh, objections to the whole thing. But then on top of that, we need to uh, renegotiate the uh, IMG, the intermunicipal grant with uh, yeah, that's, you know, with Farmington. And we need to decide what we want to do with that, how, how much of that we want to take on in terms of maintenance. You know, do we split at uh, Town Line Road? They take care of everything on the north side. We do everything on the south side. 
keeping in mind that the water tank is going to be on the south side, side of the road, so right. you'd have to have some carve out in the agreement to make sure that that's not on us. Uh, but then you also have to, you know, in the past, the expenses for that district have been split 80 20, you know, Farmington 80 us 20. But, you know, we know that's going to change in the future because as uptown grows, it, you know, it's done on a, uh, you know, uh, Based on the assessed value. Assessed value. Thank you. I couldn't say that word assessed. And uh, yeah, so you need to talk to Chris and, and get that process going also so that we will have some agreement that's satisfactory to us also. Because that agreement dates back to the one we're operating in now in 1962. But that agreement should have been terminated when the debt of the district was paid off, which was probably. About 30 years ago, but within a district, you know, very yeah. So, yeah. but it's just been a lot to ride, you know. So, all that really needs to be uh, looked at in total and, you know, a new agreement put together. So, okay. <clears throat> so, we will be submitting that letter. Yeah. I don't know that we need to have a resolution to do that. It's more of a, so I just, I just need to know because last time I went to Pete and I felt pretty confident in something and I had a discussion with him. Then it was really just the opposite after my discussion with him. So if I when I see him tomorrow night and I have a discussion and say this is where we're going, mm -hmm. I want to know that I don't have to renege on it the next day. <laughs> no, no. I, I think Jared, what will also help with Geneco is that traffic analysis and to show us moving forward with that, like we've talked about. Mm -hmm. And then we can maybe apply for some infrastructure money to maybe help with the structure we've got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. kind of comes together, right? He will, yeah, he'll be happy to know that the traffic study is being done and that by January will be, you know, one step closer to a decision on what's happening. The big thing, though, that we still have to figure out with Farmington and, and Greg is supposed to be updating that is that Auburn Trail. Now that we know yeah. that's got to be the other side of the road, mm -hmm. let's try to get that in. So that, yeah. yeah. And I haven't still heard back from them, from Senator Schumer's office over here. I'm not confident. That, that they're going to say, sure, go ahead and put it where you had it. But I think we got the easement now from the car dealer, and we're okay. okay. It's good. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Uh, I do know four o'clock. <laughs>